Hello, today is Sunday, May 16th, 2021. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I'm your host, Alex. This is a proof of life. I'm still kicking. It's been at least, yeah, it's been more than a week. The first time it's been longer than a week. And for that, I sincerely apologize. Or has it been? I don't know. Days are a fucking blur right now, but reviews are over, and I feel as uh, though I've I've been through. You know, I've I feel as if I've evaluated and been evaluated in turn. (laughs) Um, This podcast is uh, powered by Incorporating Associates. You can follow us on Instagram. The Corporate Cowboys page. Uh, You can also subscribe monthly to keep this operation non-profit for the uh, forever. (laughs) That's on Patreon, the Corporate Cowboys podcast, as well as uh, sending donations, tithings, offerings directly via Venmo. Um, That's Alex underscore Coco or Cash App. That's dollar sign corporate cowboys and PayPal dot me slash corporate cowboys. And that goes towards expenses and legal fees as always. It being Sunday today, um, it's a rather special day. It's the Lord's Day, it's the day of the dollar. <laughs> And by now, you might have, well, by now, not by now, because I I don't think I've been that deep. But if you have read the title to this episode and understand what the day of the dollar means, you'll know that money, cash, currency, it's a forever item. It's a forever item. And what it's backed by isn't really anything precious it's just trust t-r-u-s-t it's trust that's why it's printed on every dollar every coin that's why there's some trust evoking quote that's been printed on money since the dawn of time in order to garner allegiance garner respect garner some type of moral authority over those who who use it over those who leverage it and not for those who hoard it so you can have you could have billions of dollars you could have trillions of dollars you could have all the money in the fucking world and not so an ounce of trust in another person. <laughs> Just get a target on your fucking neck. <laughs> That's really what backs the dollar. And and I say this in a very literal, very guttural, very <clears throat> visceral. It's not just a platitude. I've seen folks, I mean, I've, I've heard and I've seen folks disappear for, you know, X amount of money. But what is it that causes one person to eliminate another for money? Yeah, you might say it's desperation. You might say... It's hunger, you might say it's evil. But if we're really talking about the exchange of currency, even if it is, even if this uh, social credit does happen to take over, you don't think folks can sow trust in another to look the other way and not even charge? There's going to be credit outside of the social credit Social credit, adding a qualifier to credit 
is the most um hold on is it regressive no is it retarded no adding the word social in front of credit is like adding the word is like adding the word social in front of justice bro i just yeah i fucked myself up with that one because it's true because it's true i've seen motherfuckers disappear for a handshake <laughs> woo <laughs> I've seen motherfuckers disappear for a favor. <laughs> and it's not even credit. Like, there's no points to keep. There's no entries to make into any sort of logbook. There's no, there's no data entry taking place. There's no ledgers being kept. <laughs> it's life, baby. It's real trust. That's the kind of trust. God. That's the kind of God. Hold on. That's how godly trust is. Because if. How deep. How deep do I want to get into this? I'm like seven minutes in. Because if God is in everything. And everything is of God. Then cultivating trust necessarily requires you to act in a godly fashion. It necessarily asks you to, it asks of you to be like a God. I mean, you can't be God. You, you can't be everything. You can't be everywhere. But you are also of God. You are part and parcel of this society, let's call it. But as soon as folks try to make shit all exclusive about social credit and <laughs> social justice, they're removing themselves from society. They just don't see it yet. It's like... Hold on, hold on, how do I, how do I make it not sound like a noose? Well, it could be a chain. It's like getting a Cuban link and uh, really believing that the thicker and the fatter you got this Cuban link chain around your neck. You can make it out of silver, gold, metal, whatever precious you want it to be. But you want it to be exclusive to yourself or to your own uh, little group of adherents. And so, to really stand out, you want it to be as thick and as and as dope and iced out as possible. Keep in mind, you're just adding weight. You're adding weight and slowing yourself down in future interactions. And that, you're not entitled to any more deference, to any more authority, to any more control. You're just a motherfucker with a chain around their neck, weighed down, moving slower. You might be talking more, talking louder. But if you're not providing value, even through, even through those words, <laughs> your reduced speed and your retarded brain make you a fucking target. I mean, that's, that's fucking life. You can trust that. <laughs> you can trust that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <clears throat> and I, I say that plenty where you can't you can't expect whales to not go extinct when they contract out to hungry sharks and yes that's not something you find in nature not something you find in nature whales <clears throat> whales contracting with sharks but in reality humans some are more um let's say grotesquely fat they've been um 
they've reached a position in their life where they they've managed to feed themselves well so they're fat like a fucking land whale they move slower their thinking their judgment might be clouded and somehow they've you know escaped or managed to live for so long maybe being what insulated by pussy motherfuckers who who are afraid to step up a bunch of uh, a bunch of fucking yes men who are afraid to knock the crown off but sharks can see through that corporate <laughs> sharks can of course see through corporate cowboys could see through that as well actually if what we're talking about is a hierarchy and where trust lies trust shouldn't only be going one way trust should be going both ways and a lot of those yes men don't even trust the motherfucker at the top they just do what they say because they're tied to them for a fucking paycheck or for their mode of living because they provide a standard of living for them through their check through their paycheck so yeah they are they're made they might be money motivated but there's no trust there to me those are targets also and uh it's it's (laughs) now for these motherfuckers at the top for them only it is impossible to cultivate enough trust to sufficiently insulate yourself from the real world because they operate on a social credit system <laughs> watch how watch how I'm gonna fuck this up watch how I'm gonna fucking tear it down uh, watch how I'm watch how I'm going to fucking tear this down my bad I'm working on my pronunciation and all you know this is a, a social project after all <laughs> So these motherfuckers at the top, so these motherfuckers at the top operating within a social credit system for them, because in their little world, they are at the top. They can tell that they must, they understand that they must trust the people below them. And so they'll provide them with a sufficient enough standard of living to keep them around. But just um, just under their thumb enough to keep them from questioning their position. So in that sense, uh, sure, they're smart, but they're only doing so to get away with not having to reinvest, not having to develop additional, um, how do I call it? Not having to develop the infrastructure. I think that's it. Letting others do the work. Relying relying on government. Damn. That's weird how that came full circle. And the ones at the top are actually the socialist pussies. Relying on the government. And not the ones at the bottom. Who are dependent on welfare. Anyways. Uh... Continuing, (laughs) continuing. So these motherfuckers at the top, if they could cultivate trust, then they wouldn't necessarily be godly in a sense. But folks only look up to fools at the top, the richest motherfuckers on the earth. And I don't have to name them. By this point, if you don't know who the richest motherfuckers on earth are, they're, they're publicized so often. They're shooting cars into space, getting divorced, losing half of their fucking, uh, a state to their wives or whatever the fuck and it could all be a, a a marital strategy as far as i know maybe they're still linking up on the side and just uh on paper not married anymore but they could likely still be business partners i haven't dug that deep into it and honestly i do not give a fuck but if they could develop that trust with others with everyone 
I don't believe they would be the richest people on paper. I don't believe they'd be sitting on billions and billions. But they would be the richest people in society. They would be treated in a godly fashion. And that's how they fuck up. I mean, maybe they maybe they don't have somebody that close to them. Maybe, maybe it's because, and it could be, it more than likely is, that there isn't a corporate cowboy there who can, let me see, who can invite them to, hold on, who can, who can invite them to, hold on, this is an exercise. There isn't a corporate cowboy available in their immediate circle to invite them to grow, to invite them to grow in a, hold on, I'm trying to think of the word, I, I want to say professionally, but to me, business is everything, business is life, business is always personal, business is war, But it could just be that there isn't a corporate cowboy in their camp. Someone who's willing to step up and uh, shoot an initiative. Launch an initiative that will engender the kind of trust that I believe is commensurate ought to be commensurate or proportionate to the amount of uh <laughs> i guess social credit billions and billions of dollars could buy you and it's not that hard when you think about it it really isn't but um i hear motherfuckers working at uh amazon are still uh are still on medicare I hear motherfuckers uh, working at Walmart are still in, you know, state-sponsored healthcare. I hear a lot of them still have to file for uh, Section 8. Living in the projects, living in the PJECs, in the projects, living in the ghettos. Can't move up. And uh, still are lifers. I get it if you're, what, like... 50, 60, 70, and you don't have any prospects, or like you're on your way out, but you're fucking bored and want to be a greeter at Walmart or a, a scanner, and you still have the uh, mental capacity, the uh, dexterity, the uh, the mental elasticity to keep up, um, because there are some folks who really should not be working, like who are just not mentally, physically capable to be working. And I mean, these are aged, aged and disabled folk. Then I get it. That's nice because they are still doing, they, they still feel like they're contributing to their community. And, um, and yeah, that they're, they're earning a living, even if they are receiving some form of retirement monies, some form of retirement entitlement. Keep in mind that a lot of these are just uh, a lot of these are just ramblings. These are distilled from conversations I have throughout the week. But if you're fucking twenty and you're working at Walmart, then you ought to be aiming your gun. I'm sorry. <laughs> then you you ought to be setting your sights. On moving up or moving up and out in a diagonal fashion what do I mean by that Alex what do you mean by moving out diagonally I don't mean like a lateral move like you want to move to another Walmart you could necessarily choose to move up but the hierarchy that I've seen at Walmart 
tends to be that the turnover rate as you move higher and higher up the ladder, and this is true for arguably most every organization, every formal organization in uh, society, is that the higher and higher you go up the corporate ladder, uh, the turnover rate becomes exponentially smaller. And I mean exponentially smaller because the higher you go up, the more uh, perceived job security or living security, the more perceived um, living security. Is that what I said? The more perceived security exists. And so folks tend to lose steam in some aspects tend to ease up off the gas pedal the higher they go up they make it to maybe store manager and like you know what this is you know this is pretty comfy right here i'm making a decent living i you know i'm able to have one or two kids and they become little bitches because they i mean the majority that i've seen become fucking bitches because they no longer are willing to take risks to improve the store that they're in and more willing to accept getting fucked in the ass by corporate corporate management i mean and so their store might suffer and they're gonna be less willing to speak out about it less willing to even innovate on it so take the shit that does roll downhill polish it up or uh, freeze it make a shit knife google that one google that one how to make a shit knife a poop knife <laughs> and fucking shank their corporate manager in the neck with it and show them how to really use that shit that rolls downhill why would they let why would your corporate manager let shit roll downhill when they could use it moving up the corporate ladder as well maybe it's because your corporate manager is also in a position of stability, perceived stability. And I say perceived stability because it's entry level forever at every level. Entry level forever. But if your corporate manager is sitting in a position of perceived stability, they're going to do less and less, and they're also going to get handpecked more and more and they're not getting fucked in the ass they're getting fucking fisted like a sock puppet and necessarily their orders to you are coming from their managers they just become uh intermediary intermediate intermediate voice boxes <laughs> for their own managers so creative ideas become less and less prevalent the higher you go up and then by the time you get to the tippy fucking top with the CEO, everybody, maybe one, maybe even two notches below them, that's how you get your yes men. Your pussy motherfuckers who insulate the CEO. Give him or her no bright ideas. Give them no initiatives to act on give them no reason to create and engender trust for the ranks below them and so motherfuckers named alex i mean when they accumulate enough shit at the bottom baby i'm passing shanks out i'm passing out shanks <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got shanks for sale. <laughs> <laughs>